How are things going in your life right now? Are you going through a challenging time? Or maybe life's going really good, but I'll tell you what, when things start going good for me, I start realizing, okay, something is gonna happen that's gonna be challenging and difficult. Because here's a reality. There are many storms in this life. And quite often these storms happen each and every day to some degree. And the question for today is, how do you overcome the storms of life? And we see the answer an incredible section of scripture today it comes from Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 and following. It picks off exactly where things left off last week. So let's jump in the text. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. So remember last week, Jesus had gone to a desolate place. He wanted to find some time for solitude, but the people followed. He has compassion on them. He heals them. He even feeds them. Probably 20,000 people. He feeds a multitude with a few loaves and a few fish. How? Because he's God. As we talked about last week, God provides. He provides what we need. And now he finally dismisses the crowds, he sends the disciples in boats to begin to go to their next part of where they're heading. And he finally goes off by himself to pray, to be alone with his Father. And we see in Jesus a continuous example on how to live. Yes, he's our Savior. He's the one who rescues us from sin, Satan, and death, that through him we have eternal life. But he's also our Lord. He shows us how to live, to take time, to be alone with God, to pray, to meditate, to be in his word. I think sometimes it's hard for us even to carve that time into our schedule. But if we can't do it, guess whose fault that is? That's our own fault. So often we let the world get in the way. But what's more important is our relationship with Jesus. And so he takes this time to be alone with his Father. You may wonder, okay, if Jesus is God, why would he need to go and pray to God? Well, he's also a human being like any one of us. And we see time and time again, Scripture goes off by himself. As a human Jesus, yeah, he's in communion and in fellowship and talking with his heavenly father as a human he never sinned because he's also 100 percent god as well and so we go on the next section but the boat by this time was a long way from the land beaten by the waves for the wind was against them in the fourth watch of the night he came to them walking on the sea but when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were terrified and said it is a ghost and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. So Jesus takes his time to be alone as his Father. But being God, he also knows what's going on. And he realizes his disciples are going through a tough time. That in the sea where they were at, quite often these storms would come up fast. And the waves were huge, and the wind. And they were getting buffeted all over the place. And they were afraid alone for their lives in that situation. And to make matters even worse, as they're going through this difficult time, they see somebody walking on the water. And it says they're terrified. They think it's a ghost. And they're all filled with fear. What does Jesus do? He addresses each of these three concerns. He says, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. And each one of these phrases is very important. Take heart, which means have courage. Yes, there's a storm buffeting all around, but take courage. Why? Because it's me. It's not a ghost. It's me. It's Jesus. And I have the power to help you. I can control the wind. I have control of all things. And so put your fear away. This is very important. To realize how Jesus addresses our fears, our concerns, our storms. You know, we get terrified. We may forget that Jesus is there. We get filled with fear. And what does fear do? It paralyzes us. And Jesus is right here with us, right now, this very moment, by a spirit who lives inside of us. He lets us know three important things. Take heart. Have courage. You look at phrase throughout the Old Testament. Be strong and courageous. Do not tremble or be afraid, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. 
to have courage because we're not alone. God is with us when? All the time. And even if we think he's not there, he's always there with his power, his might, his love. He wants what's best for us. And the more that we realize this, we don't have to live in fear. We can put fear aside. Because all fear does, it paralyzes us. It stops us from doing what God wants us to do. And this is a reality in all situations and the storms of life. And what's interesting, the story goes a little further here. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water, and came to Jesus. When he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. you got to love Peter. He's always doing something amazing or something kind of stupid. But he's an impulsive guy. And got to admire his courage here. Hey, Jesus, if this is you, let me come out to you in the water. And Jesus says, come. And here's something pretty cool. Peter got out of the boat. He's walking on the water. The only place I know this can happen in this day and age is up in Minnesota in the middle of the winter when the water freezes and you're walking on the ice. But this is real water. And he's walking on the water towards Jesus. He's got his focus on Jesus, and he's literally stepping on top of this water, not sinking, until he sees the wind, it says, which basically you can't see wind because it's invisible, but he could see the, what the wind was doing, causing these great waves and the wind hitting him. He could feel the wind. And his focus goes off at Jesus, and right away what happens? He begins to sink. And he says, save me, Jesus. And Jesus reaches out his hand and pulls him out of the water and gets him into the boat. He says, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You know, Jesus isn't being really compassionate here, I guess you could say, in so far as he's not saying, hey, Peter, that was a good job. I mean, you actually took a number of steps in the water. He's saying, you of little faith. He's saying, if you would have kept your focus on me, you could have kept on walking. You could have kept on doing something that goes beyond what is humanly possible. But as soon as his focus is off of Jesus, boom, kaplunk. And so it is in life. Ever notice that? When our focus is off of Jesus, what happens? We feel the wind, the waves. We feel the problems of life. We feel alone. We feel like we're helpless because in ourselves we are. We are limited, but yet with God, we are in the presence of the unlimited. We're with someone who can do anything. He even helped Peter walk on water. And really, he's shown compassion because his desire is for us to grow in our faith and to realize that through him, we can do things that go beyond the ordinary. We can do things that are in the supernatural realm. We even talked about that last week, how God can take a few loaves and a few fish and turn into abundance in the same way he does that in his church, in our own lives. In the same way, yeah, there's going to be challenges, there's going to be difficulties, and God lets us experience those difficulties. I don't believe he causes them. He allows us to go through those difficult times. He's always there. And we can learn that even those difficult times, we can rejoice, just as Paul says in Romans 5, 3 through 5, I rejoice in my suffering because suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope. After Peter went through this situation, just imagine how strong his faith was. And even when they get in the boat, what happens? The waves, the wind stops. Calm. But Jesus makes the whole storm stop. And it's calm and peaceful. And they put their faith and trust in him. They realize he truly is the Messiah, the Savior. And I know in our lives, I pray each one of us believes that, that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. He's the one that takes away our sin because time and again we fall in this life. We go kaplunk. It's like this whole world, we're in the water, we're just flailing, we're trying to keep our heads above the water. 
And Jesus comes and rescues us. And he pulls us out of the muck and the mire of this world. He puts us in a boat called his church, his eternal family. And we're on his journey to heaven. And we see people around us who are drowning on a daily basis. And he wants us to reach out and help them to save them, to bring them on board the ship so they don't perish. Because God loves all people. And even in the storms of life, he makes us stronger. We get bitter or we get better. When things go good all the time, we take things for granted. But in this life, there are going to be problems. Jesus, in this life, you will suffer. But fear not, I've overcome the world for you. That through Jesus, he lets us go through these challenges. And he's going to help us through these challenges. And we're going to become out stronger on the other side. And he says to us, hey, take courage. It is I. Put fear aside. And I want to encourage us as we go through those difficult times, as we become terrified, we wonder where God is, we're filled with fear, think about how Jesus responded. And as he's responding to you right now, he's saying, take courage. Take courage. I'm here with you. And put aside the fear. And know I've got a plan. I've got a purpose. I'm taking you to heaven. And along this journey, through the seas of life and through these storms in the boat called his church, we're called upon to rescue the people of this world who are perishing, who have no hope. Because Jesus is our hope, not only now, but forever. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us. Thank you for even letting us go through the storms of life. But even in the midst of the storms, you're there. In you, there's the eye of the storm. There's that eye in the middle of the hurricane where it's peaceful and tranquil, the world's spinning and going crazy all around us. But in you, there's peace, there's comfort. Lord, help us to take comfort in your words, to take courage, as you tell us to, to know that you're there all the time, and to cast aside fear that we can be free to serve you, even in the midst of the storms of this life. To know no matter what hits us, no matter what we face, that all things work together for the good of those who love you. We pray this in your name. Amen.